Hello, welcome to the Studio Armor Review. All right, as, as you might have followed in my uh, project update, uh, my Malkador Annihilator project, it's uh, complete. And I want to talk a little bit about the, the use of the tank and how it's included in my lists and what have you. Uh, aside from the fact that I've always wanted to have this model just because I love the way it looked, uh, I kind of was anticipating it to have some good effects on the game uh, and be real playable. Uh, it was also cheaper than a Bane Blade. Uh, coming in at just a base two two hundred seventy five points, uh, and most most bane, all bane blades are not bane blades are over five hundred points, so big savings there. So let's just talk about what this model has to offer as a on the tabletop. Uh, first of all, it is a super heavy, so the advantage right there is you can't destroy it with one shot. Uh, every weapon on it can fire a different target. Now, which is nice because there are several different weapon profiles on this and. With the way you can upgrade it, you've got a wide variety of targets you can choose and you can handle. So it's important to be able to do that on a on a model. So what I've what I've done is represented on my model a specific build out that I I, I run almost every time. I intend this to be a tank hunter, but I'll talk about all the different options you can do and you know pros and cons. Now the Disadvantage to the Malkador is actually a twofold. Um, it isn't as heavy as the Bane Blade. It's just not as strong and durable. The second is it has a single vulnerability that's actually one of the things I find intriguing about the unit entry, and that's its engine. It's a vulnerable engine. Now, in the fluff, essentially the Malkador was designed taking advantage of a very large, heavy agricultural engine for you know heavy tractors and what have you and they just used it incorporated it into this design of a super heavy tank so it's kind of an overtaxed uh, engine system as a result the rules that they give you for it is uh, they actually call it engine damage that's what they call it <clears throat> essentially what happens is when you roll on the pen table to see effect normally on a super heavy only an explodes result will cause something well in the case of the Malkador, any of the variants, not only does the explodes result affect you, but the immobilized result can affect you. Now, to be fair, under Imperial Armor Super Heavy rules, Super Heavies are also, just in general, are affected by the um, immobilized result. Now, in those rules, essentially, if you get an immobilized result on a Super Heavy, their movement's cut in half. You get a second immobilized result on it, it's basically reduced to zero. So it's a two-step process to slow down a Super Heavy. But to reflect this engine vulnerability, what they do is, as soon as you get that immobilized result, you roll a d6. On a four or better, you're okay. Anything less, you are immobilized. This goes to zero. So you can eff effectively play that rule, even with the regular 40k set, um, so that you can immobilize this Malkador, this Super Heavy, whereas you can't immobilize a Bane Blade, for example. So I actually kind of like that. Uh, it adds a little flavor, a little bit of technical challenge there on the, on the table. And it doesn't come up much, okay. Um, but it really enhances the flavor of the unit. Now from an armor perspective, it's not, it's not top of the line. It's strength 13 in the front, 12 on the side, 11 in the rear. Good news is, uh, most of your uh, opponent's melee weapons are not going to be able to hurt it in close combat. They'll need something like crack grenades, melt bombs, or haywire. So most, you know, like space marines won't be able to go in there and glance it to death. They won't be strong enough. A furious charge, maybe, but again, six all points. Now, front number 13 is nothing to laugh at. Now, granted, it's not a 14 like the Land Raider or the Lehman Russ, but still, trying to land. Uh, penetrating hit on a 13 with a LAS cannon is going to be a 5 up. That's to get a penetrating hit. And that's where the fun comes because you get a penetrating hit, you can do the extra damage, right? Now, side armor is 12, so yeah, it's a little bit on the weak side, but it just means you have to be careful uh, how you position and make sure you got some cover saves. So, from experience in combat in, on the battlefield, what I've found is just like every tank, you have to have a bubble wrap. I'll use those terms. Uh, infantry or other squads, other things to give it a cover safe from the side, or potentially even cut off view from the, the side. Uh, that will allow you to avoid some of the damage 
that comes in from any flank. Okay. Uh, now, weapon profiles very very good. The base weapon profile it, it comes with a demolisher cannon. This version comes with a twin linked las cannon on top, and the side sponsons actually uh, they come in. They're each a heavy stubber. Heavy stubber are great against infantry, but that's about it. You can upgrade it for 10 points to have the coaxial heavy stubber, sorry, not coaxial, but the pintle mounted heavy stubber, which I have modeled. And that is actually not a bad idea to, to add, because it's always good to be able to pick off infantry and do what you need to just add additional fire. For 10 points, a three shot strength for your wounding the space marine half the time, that's pretty good. Uh, now, on the, the weapons though on the side, you know, you, you can't bring the main guns to bear along the side arc at all. So, heavy stubber on the side, I don't know if that's really useful. But, I can choose to upgrade it to an auto cannon, or my favorite, as you see on the model, LAS cannon. Why not go full bore armor penetration? Uh, this is designed to take out the heavy stuff. I didn't want to use auto cannons, which are designed really to take out medium uh, armor and medium infantry or heavy infantry. I wanted to focus on those LAS cannons. This way I kind of threaten uh, a tank in all of my three arcs. Demolisher cannon, strength 10, AP2, large blast, or is it AP1, AP1, large blast? I forget which is a, what AP value. Either way, Space Marine Terminators are taking an invalid save, not an armor save. And it can it can damage uh, tanks, you know, 10, strength 10, gonna knock out most things. Uh, Gun strength 9, twin linked on the LAS cannon on top. Pretty good. Now, one thing I've noticed, um, you'll have to be very careful as you play this because, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, the front arc of a hull mounted weapon is a 45 degree angle, so it's a very narrow arc. And you can cover that arc with the main weapon. This has roughly a 45 degree angle as well. So, Whatever this can hit, this can hit, obviously. In most cases, what this can hit, this can hit. The problem is, neither one of these overlaps with the sponsons on either side. So you can't bring more than the front guns to bear unless you angle the tank so that the sponsons LAS cannon is just barely clipping one side of the unit or model, and the rest of these are clipping the other side of the model. So it's not easy to get a shot of all three weapons on an opponent. So I can't really call that a disadvantage because, again, the point is you want, on a Super Heavy, multiple weapons firing at multiple targets to put down the suppression fire and possibly pop more than one vehicle per turn. Okay. So, not a disadvantage, but it's a tactical, tactical consideration you need to pay attention to. Okay. Um, one of the biggest challenges is that demolisher cannon is really tempting. You want to go far enough forward so you get that 24-inch pie plate to drop down. Uh, sorry, 24-inch range pie plate to drop in. Of course, that pushes you forward and makes you vulnerable to charging infantry that come in. So you have to be very careful with those. Uh, again, the bubble wrap or uh, screen of infantry units to absorb uh, charges, a screen of other armored units would be useful. Uh, you may want to move this up, with flanked on either side by uh, uh, like chimeras, something light and fast. Fire this and then flat out the chimeras to kind of put a bubble around so that nothing can charge in or even give this a cover save, for example. So, with six hull points, it's going to stay around a while. Granted, it's super heavy, you can you know take an extra D3 if it penetrates and doesn't explode, but how often is that really going to happen? Uh, a Strength 7 will glance, well, will only glance. Strength 8 will penetrate on a 6 only. So chances are you're pretty safe. Uh, now again, Strength 8, the only uh, armor pierce, or the only pen table modifiers is if it's Melta. You gotta get pretty close, and if you're within Melta range, that demolisher cannon is going to land on whatever it is that's trying to hit you. So it's a real risky gamble there. Of course, LAS cannons or AP2. There's a lot of AP2 weaponry out there that can cause you to go boom. Uh, but still, all in all, it's a good vehicle. It's, like I say, just a step up from a Lehman Russ as far as uh, durability. It sticks around longer, can engage multiple targets, which is always important. And it is a threat that the enemy is going to perceive. They're going to want to focus on this one. So, again, it depends on how you want to play it. You can take advantage of that, and you're only spending 275 points, 
Now, granted, the way I have mine set up, um, it's a 200 and basically, oh, 200, sorry, 305 point uh, model due to the upgrades of the sponsons in this. So 305 points, uh, you don't really want to squander it. You still want to be a little careful with it, but know that it's going to be a fire magnet. Treat it accordingly. Screen it properly. You'll be fine. And so that's how I use this. So this, this is the 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 heavy. This is the Lord of War that I will kind of build my tank army around when I do get into battles that large. Uh, I can't really see using this in smaller point battles just because it takes up so much uh, space as far as in the in the list. 300 points is a big list, a big hit. That's 20% of a 300 point list. Um, on a Maelstrom type table, you probably need a lot more. Now, the advantage, is, however, I will say this. The one thing that's nice about having a super heavy tank is it can move 12, uh, 12 inches. Unlike the Lehman Russ, which can only move 6, period. This can flat out as well, so you can do amazing things. You know, it's got the whole Thunder Blitz thing. Everything the super heavy can do, this can do. A lot of possibilities there. Just protect it from the charging infantry, like any tank asset you have. Okay? Alright, so there is my... Malkador Annihilator, that is part of my studio, studio army currently. And if you have questions about it, please go ahead and comment below let me know. I'll try to answer them. And uh, this is one of those models that you either like them or you don't. And either way, it's it's just a nice add to uh, to your list. Some people like the Macarius. I am one of them, but I love the Malkador. Both the looks and the fluff around it. All right. Enjoy this. Uh, please share, like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know what's going on. How you, what do you think about this? See if, if have you encountered one of these on the table yet? Uh, do you happen to have one? Let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.